Now they always say congratulations Work so hard, forgot how to vacation what is the deal beautiful people it's your boy ramon lifestyles defined let's talk about being a fanboy i did a video a while back about uh how being a fanboy is not necessarily a negative thing in fact uh, i feel like being a fanboy is just a thing a, a lot of people have and they weren't they won't necessarily categorizes being a fanboy because a fanboy has a very negative condensation to it but you know I, I think being a fanboy is a good thing uh, it shows your your passion for something it shows you have this this personal connection to something and I think that's all right and as of you guys been around for a while even a lot of people in my personal life know I'm very I'm a very passionate person about certain things um, and this comes from uh, a connection to a brand, a thing, a topic, a person. It's it's when you form that connection, right? And it's it's all about identifying with something on a very positive level that adds great value to you. When you form that connection, there's there's almost there's almost no going back. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Now, what I do see wrong with uh, being a fanboy, or a part of a fanboy that is technically i think not right is how people go about it you know there there's a lack of respect among people when talking about certain topics and if you you fall into that line of disrespect or disagreement you're often called a fanboy and the person doing the calling of the fanboy is often a fanboy themselves and we go back and forth and nothing gets done and i present to you the internet now how to be a fanboy i've, I've got a, a few key things here uh number one is you need to you need to understand that there is choice uh being a fanboy like i mentioned is okay it's about your personal passion for something but you really do need to understand and respect that someone else can have the exact same bullet points when it comes to being passionate about something and have it applied to the competitor of what you love. So for instance, you guys know that I am a huge Microsoft whore. I think, I think uh, being a Microsoft whore is an evolution of being a Microsoft fanboy. There's nothing you can tell me about Microsoft. And, and what's important here is that the things that I love about Microsoft could also be the things that other people are, are in fact are the things that other people love about Apple and Google, but they have behind those bullet points, behind those passions, they have some very specific uh, things that apply to Google or Apple that makes it so dope to them. What does that mean? So. One of the things I love about Microsoft is as an IT professional, uh, I love how they foster the environment around their product. They, no one has support like Microsoft. And I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about their software solutions, their server solutions, cloud solutions, whatever it is, if you interact with Microsoft on a, an IT level, it, it is amazing the support that you have, be it from TechNeck to actually calling themselves and the engineers that get engaged when things just things are just wild. That to me, as a as an IT professional, has saved my ass time and time again. And this is why I I am 15 years deep in Microsoft ecosystem when I when it comes to my job. There's the same to be said for Apple. There's some some dude somewhere with a red beard and some nice glasses, and he's got he's drinking his green tea and he's all about Apple. He doesn't want to touch it if it's not Apple. We only support Max hair because Max don't break, and you can go to the Genius Bar, you can get it, whatever. Fuck you, Apple boy. But I understand you. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? And there's the same for Google. There's things that Google does. Maybe not the support. That's a bad analogy because. Uh, <laughs> Good luck trying to find somebody to call when Gmail's not working. But what I mean is 
uh, Google offered some very innovative solutions to some very real problems that we've had for for 10, 20 years. Uh, specifically, Gmail is one of them. They came along and completely equated the uh, negated how exchange as a, a whole worked in a business organization and they they pulled it from right under the IT professionals you don't need to have an IT administrator on site you just create a Google account and pay whatever the hell it is to get that that work account right so these are things that people who work in that world are just like wow huge headache huge cost savings and they're now Google fanboys that's okay you know the 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 key to respecting each other is to understand that uh, someone else can love something the way you can. And whatever they love can be a direct competitor to what you love, and it's okay. It doesn't make that person an idiot. It doesn't make them a fool. It doesn't make them less knowledgeable. It's, it's just a thing. It just happens to be what it is in a world of choice. Uh, secondly... Uh, <laughs> I think it's very, very important to understand the disadvantages of your product because I, I see this a lot where these fanboy wars, uh, particularly I think an interesting one as of late was the console wars with the Xbox versus, uh, versus the PlayStation 4 and that got out of hand quick. And I saw a lot of, uh, most of the comments and the back and forth, the conversations, the videos, it was about people pointing to other people's negative points. It was about uh, it was about people saying, "Oh, the PlayStation 4's got no games." It was about, "Ah, oh, the Xbox One is is weak as shit." And it was just, you know, it, it was baffling to me because as a person, and, and <laughs> as a person who, you know, I I think I've got a firm understanding of who I am, and part of understanding who I am means I need to understand the negative parts of me. I need to understand the things that I don't like about myself. I need to understand the things people don't like about myself. So when someone calls me an asshole, <laughs> it's sort of, it doesn't, it doesn't trigger me because I already know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you figured that out. Oh, you're a fat fuck. Thanks. You, you, you're sharp. So the point of doing this is you find yourself less susceptible to being dragged into negative conversation because you already know there are things about you, your passion, your fanboyism that, uh, that isn't perfect and nothing is perfect. So let's bring that home to, to Microsoft whore. Now, I understand that Microsoft took an L with Windows Phone. I understand that Windows Phone didn't have apps for years. And I defended it and, and I understood it. Now, me understanding the ecosystem behind it, the decisions, the things Microsoft were doing to try to change it, the chicken and the egg problem. If there's no developers on your platform, you won't have apps. But if there's no users, then the developers won't develop. Like, like that whole conversation back and forth helped me a lot in understanding when I was being pinned to the wall about a Windows phone in a conversation, right? People go, yeah, well, there's no fucking apps. How can you use a phone and there's no apps? And it's just like, I get it, but you know what? Sometimes the core functionality is more important to me than apps, and that's okay. And it was also a very humbling thing because you can't go to war in a smartphone market with no apps, you will lose that conversation. And you need to be okay at losing that conversation. Windows phone sucks, and this is a person saying this to me, because it has no apps. I understand what you're saying, and I agree with what you're saying because the factuality behind it is there is no apps. And if apps are important to you, then it sucks, right? Just like I could have easily have said, uh, you know, Android sucks because the battery can't last more than six hours. Well, you have a point. And if battery life, if your phone lasts until you get home at the end of a 12, 15 hour day is important to you, I understand what you're saying. So again, I, I feel like we need, we need to, if you're going to be a fanboy, you need to embrace the weaknesses of the thing that you so love. And lastly, I, I think it's it's about understanding, thoroughly understanding 
why you love something so much. This is something that uh, I can look at the iOS or the iSheet people call them. And I ask, why do you love Apple so much? And they, they I don't know, it's, it's, it's just an iPhone, it's just an iPhone. It's like this pop thing. That's not an acceptable answer to me, right? And I have a, a I, I used to, and I still do, and this has changed. I have a disdain for Apple as a company, but the Apple that I so much hated uh, five, 10 years ago is not the Apple today. In fact, uh, I, I just don't care for Apple. I, I People talk about it and the, the way they talk about it's different. The things they talk about is different. And it's not even on my radar anymore. Like, I don't even care to get involved in Apple bashing. Every now and then I'll throw out a uh, fuck Apple here because, you know, <laughs> because fuck Apple, right? But it, it doesn't bother me as much as they did. And, and it, was, it was a lot about Steve Jobs and his arrogance and his fucking blatant back and forth. And the way people just followed him, you know, things like, why would you have Wi-Fi on a Zoom? That's fucking stupid. And then he turned around and put Wi-Fi on iPods. It was just like, what What the fuck? Like, that shit just drove me nuts. Like, this guy was an asshole. The people around him said he was an asshole. The people that fucking worked directly for him said he was an asshole. The things he would say and do made him an asshole. And people compared him to Bill Gates. It was like, you... You, you can't be serious, right? So this is these are the things that like I feel not a lot of people do when they, they, they call themselves or they think they're a fanboy or a passionate of a brand. Do you understand why you love this brand? For me, I can go back to Microsoft and say, you know what? Outside of the IT professional stuff, when you look in the education world, Microsoft charges education pennies on the dollar for software. That's super dope to me. That's super important to me. And, and I, I feel like, you know, it, it's it's something that's so underrated. If you're if you're a small business and you're starting out, you can get a lot of Microsoft software for stupid cheap. That's important to me. And then I, I, I look at I look at Bill Gates as an individual and what he's doing and how he's out here using his endless amounts of money to cure one disease at a time and and push forward thinking and, and, and really try to get us in a good shape as a humanity. That's super important to me. That was the leader of a company that I adore. When he left, he made it that 17% of Microsoft profit will always go to charity. What do you, what do you, that's fucking dope. That's why I will forever be in love with Microsoft as a brand. You need to understand the pull that that you that this this company has on you or else you're just you're just pointless and when you get in these fanboy conversations you just look like an idiot right so these are the three key things that i, I would want to outline that if you are in fact a, a fanboy that you should sort of you should sort of employ to elevate your level of fanboy like i said being a fanboy is not always a bad thing being passionate about something i think is a wonderful thing you know we as people uh, life has an expiration date and i'll be damned if i'm just here bored out of my mind my, my mind and and not just loving shit like i should and, and I, I really urge you guys to do the same don't let the word fanboy uh pull you down somebody looks and says you know because you're watching one of the videos on this channel you're a fucking microsoft fanboy and you just look like yes yes i am thank you for pointing that out captain obvious find the bridge and fucking jump my name is ramon thank you for checking out the video hit the like button if you liked it don't forget to subscribe we got plenty more coming and check out the links below for uh the 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 links to our other channels we got photography we've got sneakers and shoes uh we've got accessories sunglasses watches it's all there ignorant gamers for the gamers it's all down below I'm out of here. Peace.